What's up, guys? This is Revenge of the Jocks. I'm your host, Marty. And with the holiday season, holiday season means family. So today I got my dad on the show, Big Mike. Well, I'm happy to be here, man. Glad to be in California. Love the weather out here. Get a chance to see my baby, Jet. You know, I'm having a great time so far. That's really good, Dad. That's really good. <laughs> our birth mother wasn't a part of our lives. You, you raised us. So what made you stay and be there be a father when it could you could easily went the other direction well i think growing up in a meet louisiana having my dad with me my whole life it was important to me to, for me to do what my dad did so i felt like it was something i had to do it was something i really wanted to do and i enjoyed doing it you think that your idea of being a father would have changed if you didn't have a father in the household but i think that that is a factor in most people's lives when they don't have a dad growing up with them it's easy for them to walk away but for me not having a dad wouldn't have not i would not have done things differently no what made you move away from home? Well, you know, growing up in a I seen a lot of things. I seen a lot of people, you know, my people that look like me who just wasn't doing nothing. What I thought they could be doing in life. They would settle for real, real small things in life. And they thought getting a house or trailer or car and a job, you, you've made it. And I just didn't want that for myself or my family. Like when I was growing up in a Louisiana, you know, we had a we had a, a, a city pool. And in that pool. Black people weren't allowed to swim in that pool. We're not talking about 1950 or 19s. We're talking about in the 70s and the 80s. And so I felt like, you know, at that time, I, I did not want to be in that environment. I did not want my kids to grow up in that environment. I wanted to be in a place where your, the color of your skin, economically, what what you're doing in life didn't matter. You just want to be in a place where you, your family could be safe and, and, and enjoy life. But how did you know it was different? In other places, as far as like, if that's the community that you grew up in, you kind of be like, oh, this is just the way the world is. But what made you really believe that that's not the way the world's supposed to be working? I, I read a lot. I read about places. I read about things I want to do in life, things I want to accomplish in life. I, when I first got out of high school, I went to college in, at USL. And, and there I met guys from, from Florida, from L.A., from New York, from Chicago. And I'm like, wow, these guys from these places that I've never been to, always wanted to go. And so I just picked California. That's where I wanted to be. And that's why, that's why I ended up in California. But see, that's why I think reading is so important. Because it lets you know the world is bigger than the world that you're living in. Like there's so much more the world has to offer and that the world that you're living in does not have to be the way that it is. Because you could visit all these imaginative places, places that you could dream of never going. You start reading and learning about about them. Then it get to a point where you're so inspired that you want to go to these places. Exactly. I mean, traveling and reading is I think reading is very important for people. People should read more. They should understand what the world is about, understand what the world has to offer for them. And I think they should take that. I, should, I think they should take that chance and become the person they think they should be you know when i when i was younger when i travel i just wanted to go to the red light district <laughs> i mean like i just want to go where, where it was happening i didn't really care about the culture the community the foods whatever was going on in that area i just want to go where hey, i was gonna have some fun and so now you know as i got older i realized that I, I missed out on so much by having that mindset when i was younger like now when i travel i want to eat the foods I want to wear the clothes. I want to wear the clothes. I want to <laughs> eat the food. I want to hang out with the locals. Yeah. I want. I want to just do what they do because I want to be part of that community when I go there now. When Mike decides to take a knee, how did that make you feel as a veteran? I felt really good about that. I was. I was, I was really proud of Michael for his stance. I felt like you know a lot of people talk about you know football players taking a knee that disrespectful to the to the military. Well, Michael grew up on a military base. His dad was in the military. And I love the military. And, you know, and I, I tell young kids all the time, when you when I go to schools and I speak speak to kids at school, I tell them the military is a good choice. If you can join the military and support your country, I think, I think you should do it. But for people to have the, the narrative they have about football players taking a knee, it's so dis disrespectful to the football players. So often we see that happen in Dallas just, just – this is 2018. We just saw it happen in Dallas with some kids leaving the party. The police officer shoots in the car, kills a young 15-year-old kid. And so when you see the football players taking a knee for those type of things, I think it's great. How does that make you feel as a father? It infuriates me sometimes when I hear people talk about him, the way they talk about him and other players, where they talk about those guys like they hate America, they should go to a different country. I think the person who said they should, they should go to a different country. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think if you don't want somebody to, to peacefully protest, you should go to Russia and live there. Yeah. Because they don't let you protest there. 
because they're not doing anything. They're, they're not doing anything for protest. They're not doing anything. So if you if you don't if you don't like the people who protest in this country, you should go somewhere else. You yeah. should you should move. Don't tell me to move. You move. I don't party to this day because y'all made party partying unbearable as a kid. I mean, anytime we popped up at a party, like hey, I'm gonna go by such and such house for a party, y'all had to be the motherfuckers that came in the house and set. And they only just come in the house, but you guys would sit around for five to ten, fifteen minutes, and no one would be no one would be able to dance for fifteen minutes or do anything. Everyone had to be on their best behavior chaperone in the building and by that time i was like i didn't want to be that guy when people like oh yeah marty's dad came by and mike's dad came by they stood for 20 minutes we couldn't even dance or do anything when you when you're raising uh young black men in america you know and you, even when they want to go hang out with their friends you have to know what's happening in their life you have to be involved in their life you have to understand that i just cannot allow my boys or my daughter to go somewhere that i don't understand what's happening in there i need to know what's going on there but the one thing y'all did y'all always you always would rather have people at our house exactly because i can see what's happening i get to know those kids i get to know what they're about and i and i know if i want you guys around them or not i didn't i didn't choose your friends but I selectively, like, kind of eliminate them by doing certain things, not by just coming, hey, you can't be friends with them, because I don't think a parent should do that. I don't think you, yeah. I don't think you tell a child, you can't be friends with that guy, or you can't be friends with that girl. You, you, you tell a girl she can't have a boyfriend before you run, she'll stick this house nine times. <laughs> can't do that. So you got to be able to handle tactfully. You got to be involved. You got to understand what's happening in your kid's life. At a certain age, you got to start navigating the world and make decisions for yourself. Well, I think what the parent's job is to equip the kids so when they do go on their own, they're able to fly. You know, when I was growing up, of course, like every other black kid in America, I wanted to be an athlete, right? Like, because that's all you was taught. You know, that's all you saw. That's, you saw that your heroes were athletes. It was a proven method. Because they came method. out of situations they that came you out were situations. in. Yeah. You could be like them. That's somebody you could relate to. Yeah. You know, I didn't grow up talking about black doctors or black lawyers or black authors, you know, people like that. I didn't even know those people really exist in, in when I was growing up. Yeah. Because I grew up in a small town in Louisiana. We didn't talk about those things. We weren't taught those things. We didn't see those things on TV. And so what we did see on Sunday was Emmett Dorsett, Tony Dorsett running for touchdowns. Yeah. You know, or, or Willie Galt catching a touchdown. I was a hustler. Like, I, my whole thing was this. Like, I wanted to make money. You, like, you I want to make money for myself. I want to be able to go buy things and buy more candy to make more money. Like, I, and just to be able to buy better toys. So, if I came after six or seven months and I'm in a garage and all the bikes are rusting and no one's riding the bikes, I think they're free to sell. So, I just go in the garage, I take everyone's oh, bike except for mine and sell and them. And sold them. Did you think I was going to be the first one to get married? No. I did not think, I, honestly, I probably, I didn't think you was going to get married. Ever? No. <laughs> I think you'll get married because you 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 the type you the type of dude that like you could go eat at the same restaurant for six months and then like I ain't never going back. There. <laughs> I had the low, the bummy Air Max, um, the one that used to have the map on them. They were like thirty nine dollar Air Max, and everybody mm -hmm. else was like, "Oh, what are those?" You know that kind of thing. And I was like, "That's because they got that Texan mentality." See, if, they, if you had those shoes on in California. Nobody would have cared. Nobody would care. Nobody would care. Yeah. Only in these south places where they ain't got lights on their house, but they got nice shoes on their feet. Like seriously, like okay, like why you got those shoes on? You ain't got you got roaches running yeah. around the house. I was like, man, I'm gonna be the best basketball player ever grace this school. Everybody want to talk about me. Let's see who's talking at the end of the day. Cass and I used to open up the gym for me in the morning. I used to be the only kid there. I was like a weirdo taking shower in the school. Michael used to bring my clothes with him, and um, I just started getting better and better because during football season I was practicing. Then even after football practice, I would go play basketball in the church leagues and the Odell League. Your mom said to this day that she think you was a better basketball player than football player. I always thought you was a great basketball player. You know, I remember the time when we we played against Indiana Spice. I think that's the name of the team. Indiana Spice. With Indiana Spice. Greg Golden. Greg Golden. Josh McRoberts. Josh McRoberts. Michael Josh Conley, Conley and Daquan Cook. Yeah, Cook. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember his name. Cook. Josh, All the guys on oh, yeah, the team. Yeah, Josh McRoberts was there. Yeah. On that team, man, and you dunked on Greg Oden at least nine times. I'm like, this dude just killing Oden. Mike Shashevsky come running down the stands, offering scholarship at the, on the spot. Like, this dude could play some basketball. I loved growing up with y'all, you know, being able to get to the park and play football and play basketball or go to band practice or go to football practice. I mean, people don't understand, like, I never missed a practice. Like, I... I know I was telling people, like, that year you had to take that... After Enron happened and everyone was scrambling for jobs, you ended up having to take that job at um, in Chicago. In Chicago, yeah. And that's when I was, like, 
just really, really balling. Yeah. I remember I was calling you at the game, and then you end up quitting that job because you was like, I can't miss any more games. Exactly. Fast forward a couple of years, I get really, really good, and it's like, oh, I'm going to put my name in the NBA draft. So I decided to go to the NBA draft. Yeah, the, the thing about the NBA draft, for you coming out of high school, being the number one ranked tight end in the country, USA Today All-American, U.S. Army All-American, and then you're playing basketball on top of that. we like, damn, he's good. Being in what we consider a black college sport, I could not get any help. I could not go reach out to some agent and say, hey, man, what do you think? Yeah. You know, teams call me on the phone. The Miami Heat called me. It's like, hey, Mr. Ben, this is the GM from Miami. He's like, hey, we really like him. tell us. We'll take him in the first round. I say, really? It's like, yeah. I say, we're going to stay in the draft. And then about a couple of days before the draft, he calls him back. He said, we got this guy from uh, from France we really like, but we still would draft Martell. It's probably in the second round. We're still drafting. Utah Jazz said the same thing. The Memphis Grizzlies said the same thing. The Seattle Super Sun said Super. I'm sitting there with Seattle Super Sun's coach. He was like, I don't think any kid could go out of high school to go play basketball. But did he draft a high school kid right out of, out of Seattle? Yeah, maybe Millen. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, why are you why? Cause, but he did. He was like, "Yeah, I think that your defense, he, which was crazy." He's like, "I can see you guarding the Kobe Bryant." He said, "You can see you guarding the Kobe Bryant." I was just like, you in, in my head, I was just like, "He's like, yeah, I don't see you scoring, but I see that you could guard anybody in the league." That's exactly kinda, what he said. And he I was like, kind of like, "Me guarding Kobe Bryant? This motherfucker tripping." <laughs> but then you fast forward to the Spurs workout. So we're there in San Antonio, get there to the workout, and they got seven guys, and they want to play four on four. So they was like. Kid, we got anybody want to play? I was like, I'll play. But the crazy thing is, I didn't know why you still had breakaway pants on. He's like, we need one more. You like, <laughs> boom, I'm ready. Like, yeah, at the stretch. I'm ready to go. go. I'm ready to go. Leg, like, lick your hands, wipe the bottom of your feet. And you're then high, you know, I was like, all right. Then you start making all these shots. I'm like, Dad, I'm trying out, not you. So we're in Bremerton. We're in Navy housing. And uh, and I and I, and I I get these little Siberian Husky dogs. They were beautiful dogs. It was mm-hmm. like three of them. And I see, and, there's a, and it was a, like, like a little light pole out there with all these signs on people looking for their dogs. I'm like, everybody, everybody dog lost? It's like a, it's like a Twilight movie. Yeah, right, <laughs> all these things. And you see Fifi, you see Fufu, you see Ra Ra, you see JoJo, you see Mary, you see Bobby. I'm like, damn. So I go home, and sure enough, my dogs is gone. <laughs> So they start doing investigations because everybody, you know, white people, you get their dogs, they pissed off. Hey, they, they care about the dogs. What? They care about human beings. Hey, I ain't got to do shit. They're going to find out what happened to my dog, right? Because they're going to find out what happened to their dog. Yeah. And so a couple of days later, we find out we had this family who moved in. They was barbecuing every weekend over there. I'm like, how they do that? Come to find out, they ate everybody's dog. A lot of people would like to wait until they're, you know, they don't had all their fun in life and now they just want to be a father or they want to be a mother. I tell people all the time, like, Having your kids young is an amazing thing because you get a chance to grow with them. Mm -hmm. You get a chance to enjoy life with them. You can do anything they want to do. You have the energy to do it. You know, you you don't, even now, like even when I'm with my grandkids, they they run the hell out of me. I I absolutely love the fact that I can sit back and and watch you guys become husbands and, and dads and see what you guys accomplish and see what you guys do. And it's like, yes. You know, I feel like as a father, you feel like you've made it when your kids have made it. 